Hey guys, today I want to show you how to create this folding sandwich style animation and we're going to use Cavalry for this. I'm going to be using the free version throughout this video so you can just download the free version and follow along. So we're inside Cavalry and we'll start by changing some of our composition settings by hitting Command or Control K and I want some more frames to work with so I'm going to change this to a thousand and the playback range to a thousand as well and we'll change our frame rate to 60. So the way we're going to do this if I alt click here on the rectangle shape is by using a duplicator so we're going to group this rectangle by hitting command or control g and then we can click this duplicator button right here. This will duplicate our shape according to some patterns. So right now it's arranged in a three by three grid, but we want a linear distribution. So this is our line that we can make longer or shorter, and we can have any numbers of shapes here. Let's use five. Now, before we continue, I quickly want to take some time to explain the basics of arrays in Cavalry, because this is something that we're going to be using all the time, and it really helps to have a basic understanding of how they work. So let's start by creating a color array. We can do this by clicking right here and then create array from palette. So here we have an array of colors and an array is basically a collection of data. So in this case, a collection of colors. We start with the first color and it has the number or index zero. The second color has the index one and a third color has the index two and so on. If we click onto our duplicator, let's make sure that draw debug information is turned on. We can see that our shapes have numbers as well. So this is the shape with the index zero, the first shape and next shape has index one, two, three and four. Now, if we take our color array and we plug it into our rectangle shape over here as a fill color, what will happen is that the color with the index zero will get assigned to our shape with the index zero and color with one gets the shape with index one and so on. Just as a quick side note, if we have, for example, 10 shapes, these colors will just repeat. So that's also nice to know. Why is this important? Because this doesn't only work with colors, this works with everything. So for example, if we want to give our rectangles different scales, we can right click on a scale property and go to add behavior and then add a random behavior. And on a random, we can choose something that's a little bit more digestible. So something like this. So this will generate an array of numbers, one for each shape ranging between 0.8 and 1.2. So the first shape will get maybe 0.8. The second shape will get 1.1 or something, the third shape will get one and so on. So this is basically all you have to know about duplicators and arrays, but it's really helpful to have a basic understanding of how these things work because we're going to use this throughout the process and you're going to use this all the time in Calvary. So now it's time to give our layers the ability to rotate in 3D space. And for this, we can alt double click a rectangle shape. And here where it says deformers, we're going to use a 3D matrix deformer. And I'm just going to drag this onto our shape for organizational purposes, as well as the scale. And let's alt left click here. When I scrub these values, you can see that we can rotate our shapes in 3D space. As always, we don't just want to have one value for all the shapes. We want to use a array of values to give each shape a different value here. So we can right click, add behavior, and then add a random behavior. We'll also drag this below the 3D matrix so we know they correspond. Let's choose some values, maybe negative 50 and 50, just to have it a bit more visible. If we click our 3D matrix, you can see that for the rotation, we get uh, something like negative 41 and negative 41 for our first shape, and then for our second, third, and fourth, so on, we get different values. Now, one thing we might do is to come into our rotation here and just click this separate channels check mark. What happens now is that we don't get one value per shape, but we get a different value for the X channel and the Y channel. 
So this helps break it up a little bit and makes it look more natural. So next up, we want to rotate our shapes. So we can use this Z value from our 3D matrix deformer to do just that. I don't really want to manually um, set some keyframes here. Um, so I can use a frame behavior. So right click, add behavior, and then use a frame behavior. And this will just output the current frame number. So as we can see right here on frame zero, we rotate them by zero. And on frame 60, we rotate them by 60. So this will just make them move on their own. And if we all double click on our frame behavior, we can also make them rotate quicker by increasing the strength here. And now we have nice rotating shapes. Now let's also offset this rotation a little bit per shape. So we can use this offset value here and go to add behavior and add a stagger behavior. And this will also help break this up a little bit. Maybe we'll try something like 50. If I scrub this here, you can see what's happening. We offset the rotation a little bit. So if I let them rotate now, it's just a little bit more organic. All right, so let's quickly do some organization. So we'll drag our stagger onto our 3D matrix and our frame, drop that below the stagger. Now, if we quickly check our duplicator, our goal is to animate this size property here to close and open this layer sandwich. What I want to do to give this animation a little bit more impact is to have some of our behaviors like the different scales and the different rotations just deactivate them when we're compressing our sandwich and when we open the sandwich they should sort of activate and this way we can have a more impactful motion when we open the sandwich and my goal here is to have one single value that opens the duplicator and also enables my different behaviors so that i just have to use one keyframe instead of keyframing like five different layers so let's see how we can do this we'll hit control or command full stop or you can also click this little plus button right here and we're just going to create a value behavior and this is just a value that you can use we'll keyframe this so let's maybe Go to frame 60 and increase this to 100. Now, if we go to our random rotation, we can use this value that we just created, which outputs zero in frame zero and 100 on frame 60. And we can just use this to affect the strength of our rotation behavior. So now on frame zero, the rotation is completely gone. And as you can see on the left, if we scrub these frames, our rotation will slowly appear. We can make this more apparent by inputting something more extreme here. So as you can see on frame 100, we have quite some rotation on our shapes. And as we go down towards zero, we lose the rotation. This just goes for our X and Y rotation, the Z rotation we still want to keep. So let's do the same thing for our scale as well. So when this value is zero, I want the shapes to have the same scale. As this value increases to 100, I want the random behavior to take effect. If we were just to take our scale layer and plug this in here directly, you can see what's happening. Our shapes disappear because all the shapes get a scale value of zero. And as I increase this, they get a value between 0.8 and 1.2. This is not quite what we want. We want them to have a base scale of one and then shrink or scale a little bit. So for this, we can just alt left click a rectangle shape and where it says scale, we'll right click and add an expression and we'll just add plus one to these values. So they always have a value of one plus whatever the random scale behavior applies as well. Maybe let's use some different values, maybe negative 0.3 and 0.3. So now here they all have a scale of one and here they get a scale between 0.7 and 1.3. So now that we affect the strength of our behaviors with this value, we also want to affect the size of our duplicator so that this shrinks and opens up. 
If I were to just take this value and plug it into here, this wouldn't quite work because now we have a value of zero and then we have a value of just 100 on frame 60. And in order to open up this duplicator, we need something along the lines of 1,500. So we need a way bigger value. So we need some way to convert this zero to 100 range to a zero to 1,500 range. And for this, we can just use the number range behavior. So let's command or control full stop and let's type in number range. And this behavior will take a value. In our case, we'll use this one. And we can also rename this to main driver so we know what's going on. The source minimum and the source maximum is the smallest and biggest value that our main driver value here provides. So this is going to be between zero and 100. And the minimum and maximum is the remapped value. So we want to remap this to a value of zero and 1500. So if the input of this number range is 100, we'll output 1500. And if the input is zero, we'll output zero. And if the input is 50, we'll output 750, for example. So let's take this number range and plug it into the size of our duplicator. And now you can see that as we scrub this timeline from zero to 60, our shapes open up and close again. So the last thing we need to do is to add our images. And this is super simple. We'll start by deleting our color array. And I just dragged in a folder containing my assets. In this case, there are videos but you can also use images. I right click and create array from assets. And this works the same as the color array um, with one exception. Let's alt left click or rectangle shape. And in order to use a image or a video as a fill for our rectangles, we need an image shader. So let's right click, add shader and image shader. I'll just drag this onto a rectangle for organization. And let's alt left click our image shader. And here you can see we can drag in or connect an asset. And this is where our asset array goes. So this works the same as before. We have an asset array. That's just a collection of assets and they all have an index and they're being assigned to our shapes via the indices. So this is the asset zero and it's being assigned to this shape right here asset one, asset two, and so forth. Now let's quickly drag this into here. So we have a bit of organization and maybe our number range into our main driver. And let's also change our background color to black by just going in here. And this is the setup complete. As always, once we have a system like this in place, you can iterate really quickly and get to your final animation. Just to give you a couple of ideas, we can go into a group here we can play around with the random rotation, maybe negative 30 by 30. We can change our stagger here to offset the rotation. We can come into our scale property and maybe increase this by negative 0.5 and 0.5. We can go into a rectangle shape and change this expression value to change the base scale or we can just do that inside of our duplicator shape as well by changing the shape scale here. So let's change this to 1.3. And if I hold down Alt and Enter, we'll change both values here. And for the animation, we can set some keyframes here. Let's start by hitting Shift 2 on the keyframes for our main driver to give this some easing. So it's a bit more of a nice movement. And then we can also go into our duplicator to animate the rotation, maybe something like 90 to negative 40 or maybe 40 to negative 40. We can also give this some easing. And for the scale, we can take this value and drag this onto this one. So we can scale this proportionally by just changing this one value. And maybe let's go for something like one and maybe 1.5 or two. And let's increase our count a little bit. Maybe let's go to nine shapes and give the scale some easing. And if we play this back, 
we see we already have something that looks quite nice. As always, I'm not going to spend too much time fine tuning this because that's really up to you guys. You can make changes super quickly, you can try out values and you'll often get some really unexpected and cool results. I hope this tutorial helped you guys in creating not just this animation, but creating your own systems as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.